so yeah we've got the results and yep so we'll start by checking the contours so first of all we can check the contours for the velocity and uh, we know that in the ch case of channel flow it develops after some time so yeah right now you cannot really see it so let me zoom in the whole thing oh yeah in the case of inlet now we can check it for symmetry that is the like the body so you can see that it it like before it even begins so it, because our case of reynolds number is laminar so it's very small and the diameter is, diameter itself it's very small so that is why the flow is in the case of hydrodynamic it's it, it develops quickly and we'll check for the temperature here So yeah, there is a small change here. So you might think that it's totally developed here. And uh, we'll try to compare our result with the data that we have on the outlet part. So we'll use the probe feature. So this is probe. So it just gives you the value at any particular point that you wish for. So I'll just, okay. I'll just hit it here because that's like the center line and I'm interested in temperature so that gives me somewhere around 20 degree itself and so it, it shows that there there isn't really any change in the temperature or should I just put it the probe over here yeah around 20 degrees and when we see the results it's around 19.7 degrees so uh there isn't really any drop in the temperature because of the oil and that is the reason why we say that the flow takes a lot of time in the case of high parental number fluids to develop so because uh there is a substantial pressure difference between uh, the surrounding and the uh, flowing media which is 20 degrees but uh, because uh, even because of the zero degree surrounding the flow temp the flow temperature it doesn't drop so the next part is to get the get like the cross-sectional profiles and uh, the easiest way to do is we define suppose we define a line because the cross-section in this case is a line and we can we, uh, you can assume that this is a zero zero because i've defined my geometry to be like that and uh, if this is zero zero this point is 200 comma zero right and that particular point on the top edge of the like top right is also 200 but that is like 0 0.3 because of the diameter so if we click apply and if we zoom in over there I hope I'm right here. Okay, let me just check the geometry once again. And because uh, these particular x and y values, they define the two points of your line. So I hope I'm not wrong. Yep, I guess I am wrong. So we'll need to check where our origin is. So this is our origin right here. So it's not really zero zero for the bottom left corner, which it should be like. So what we can do is we can just measure this distance from this particular point to mm, how do we measure it? Yeah this distance and this is 14 so we have to subtract 14 and we don't have to save it we simply can delete it so this would be 186 i'm sorry for my mistake because in my previous example i put that to 0 comma 0 and you can see that there's a yellowish line over here so 
now we have defined a line so we can evaluate any kind of um, property along that line so let me just put this line into like into the center so I'll just divide it by 2 93 93 apply and probably somewhere yeah here you can see yeah so we'll just try to define the temperatures and the velocity profile at the center line so to do that um, I just need to go here to the chart option I'll click OK and to the data series I'll say it's say velocity doesn't matter you can say velocity center in the center on the x-axis on the y-axis we want velocity right and the location is line one and we apply it so you see it it goes something like this and we can also similarly we can check it for the temperature so it goes like this so because in this case uh, this we have the oil and uh, I've I told you that I've done a similar case for the water and in the in the case of water uh, we don't have like a tremendous values of parental numbers so the flow it, it develops rather quickly as compared to the cases of oil so uh, we have some results I have some results of a case in which the medium is water and it's not oil so this is the result from the case of a water simulation that I've done so you can see that the aspect ratio is relatively shorter so the pipe is not as long as in the last case and this is the velocity profile so this is like the develop um, development of the hydrodynamic boundary layer so we have one two three four and five cross section here so which I define by entry quarter half third quarter and exit so we have five different lines and in the particular chart I use I as you can see that the temperature it's it's almost done no no it's not done on the y-axis we have the velocity so that that's what I mean uh, it shouldn't be named as the temperature it's misleading so I'll just name it the velocity profiles So that is how you can check if the if any kind of boundary layer whether it is hydrodynamic or the thermal boundary layer it has been fully developed or not so as you can see that the quarter point it it lies well within the fully developed flow range so that is why for the quad um for the quarter it's uh, is the same as the other cross sections and that is the meaning behind the fully developed flow that it doesn't change with the x direction or with the flow direction so that is why the the flow profiles they are stagnant or they doesn't change with the position so i hope that uh, with this tutorial there would be uh, no confusion about how you can first about how you can input the thermal conditions into the flow and uh, how you can solve that particular problem especially if the flow is laminar and uh, yeah this is the case of a force convection so there could be different boundary conditions especially for the thermal part you can have convection or you can have convection plus radiation so that is up to the temperatures that we are dealing here because at the lower temperatures the radiation is not significant so you can just uh, uh, ignore the radiation part here and the next part that we learned that how you can actually plot these kind of profiles so this is useful when you are like producing some kind of reports so in your reports you can put these figures because if you put the contours it's not really very useful uh, for people to understand the data from contour but when you have the profiles you can actually put the numbers in the picture so it's much much easier to read the plots and uh, and from these plots you can actually predict the velocity the maximum velocity and uh, these are more practical so don't always rely on the contours when you're presenting your results because they look good definitely they look good if because they are colorful but the colors are fancy part of CFD we are not here for that we are here for the practical validation and the reasoning behind that so that is my whole motive that you can understand the 
the part that is behind those colorful contours and that is the thing i'm talking about so if you like my video please hit the like button and if you're not subscribed to my channel uh, it's up to you if you want to subscribe or not but i'll try to keep these kind of videos uploaded and uh, if if there is anything wrong about these videos i'd really like to know about them and i'm really looking forward i'm always looking forward to know about what can i do to make this channel better and uh, yeah and because this is a basic cfd series so uh, i really love to hear from the beginners about uh, the level of these videos and what kind of stuff uh, do you expect further and if there is any problem that you're facing whether it's about cfd or is it about the theory behind the cfd i'd really like to help you out in that don't hesitate to contact me my contact details are already there so thank you for watching